thank you for joining us for a budget forum. We, we think it's important to give folks an opportunity to uh, advocate for the things you'd like to see included uh, in uh, the budget as we go through developing our, uh, our budget. Mr. Burroughs, pleasure to see you. Dr. Anderson, pleasure to see you. Mr. Kaufman, pleasure to see you. Um, I won't greet everybody like that because we'll run out of time, but uh, we uh, did sign ups in advance and I'm gonna go down the list on my uh, trusty uh, Blackberry here. Yes, I'm still a Blackberry person. And, um, and everybody gets two minutes as I understand it and Mr. Pugh is running the uh, clock over there. So if everybody could just you know be mindful and we'll run through our list and uh, and get to work. So that's how it goes. So um, our first participant tonight, our first speaker, is Gina Bowler. Welcome back. Thank you. Um, my name is Gina Bowler. I'm the parent of a kindergartner in the new Overlook um, Spanish Immersion Elementary School. I'm also the co-founder of My Bilingual Child, a grassroots group and a resident of District 9. Um, thank you, CEO and Board of Education, for this opportunity to give input on next year's operating um, budget. When you provided input last year, I, of course, um, along with others, advocated for the new Spanish Immersion Dual Language Program and um, you know, to be added among the specially programmed options. And now that my child is enrolled, I have a better appreciation for what a massive undertaking that was. And so I'm all the more grateful <laughs> for what you all have done. And, um, and I thank everyone who had a role in, um, in starting that program. For uh, FY 2016, I'm requesting that the school system, of course, continue to support uh, the Spanish Immersion Dual Language Program. In addition, please um, support further parental engagement around language immersion and um, international baccalaureate programs um, for current families as well as prospective families. Engage parents around options for integrating IB into the Spanish Immersion Dual Language Program and also um, engage us around um, continuation of the Spanish Immersion Dual Language Program from K-6 through 12. Um, raise awareness about language immersion programs um, and the short window to apply for kindergarten entry among families um, whose children aren't in, in the school system, perhaps because they're not school age yet. Um, and a couple of very quick examples, um, like the academic affair, um, I'm sorry, the academic fair tomorrow at the high school. Um, an, an idea for next year would be to use some of those classrooms to um, hold panel discussions on language immersion and IB and question and answer periods, just so that we can go more in depth about these um, programs. Um, another idea is to um, have all of the Spanish Immersion Dual Language Schools have open houses, like the Robert Goddard French Immersion. Um, they've scheduled eight open houses from November through May already. You can register online now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Stacy Nellums. Stacy Nellums, N E L O M S. Okay. Sharon Sims. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak. I have two key things. Um, one is about our parents here in Prince George's County. We have to get them engaged, and I would like to see a line item created for that, um, be it a study for um, next year or something that can be implemented, but we need to get our parents more engaged, and especially on the high school level. The second thing is in reference to the shortfalls that some of our schools are receiving because of their enrollment. And they have to cut back on certain things, operating things. If there is not a line item there to help these schools, I would like to see one created. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Josephine Ansa Brew.
Josephine Ansa Brew. Eileen Cave. Good evening, Dr. Maxwell staff and distinguished school board members. As we face fiscal challenges for the coming year, on behalf of the Prince George's Arts and Humanities Council, I commend you on the investment in arts education made to date and urge you to anchor the unprecedented momentum in whole brain learning now underway. The establishment of an arts integration program and the formation of creative leadership network of principals and staff have provided the resources and best practices to support teacher training and the connection of our students with career tracks towards the county's priority of growing economic development of the creative arts industry. The demand will grow now and in the future. Corporations are hiring graphic facilitators to visually map staff meetings. Nano, air, nano art sales are soaring, blending the biological sciences with photography. And designs conceived in engineers using a 3D printer result in prosthetics as reported in this Sunday's Washington Post. The arts are essential to our students closing the academic achievement gap and our county attracting a much greater share of resident enrollments in our public school system. We must continue building exemplary arts programs and integrating the Common Core standards with the new National Core Arts standards for music, drama, dance, and the visual arts. Therefore, we must fund and hire creative arts staff experienced in the emerging digital media arts technologies that will prepare our students for the 21st century global marketplace. Thank you for consideration. Thank you. Robert. Adams. Uh, good evening. My name is Robert Adams. I'm the uh, PTA president over at uh, Capitol Heights Elementary School. Uh, I guess basically um, as it pertains to the budget, we would like to see more money going to technology. Um, as we move into, uh, you know, getting ready for the park, which is partly taken on the computer. You know, we would like to see all of our kids with tablets or laptops. Um, you know, also hearing about parent communication. I don't know that it needs to be a line item budget, but I think that as we move into the new Common Core, that I feel like you know the feedback that I'm getting. A lot of parents are feeling kind of left out the loop. You know, it was easier for us to teach our kids two plus two is four, but now it's a, it goes a little bit deeper. But we need to we need to have that information. Um, my principal, she just had her first meeting with us the other night to start going over some of those things to um, give us the tools that we need to help our kids. I think that, you know, too often the parents are being left out of the equation on so many levels. So <clears throat> I don't know that it needs to be a line item budget, but you need, you need to bring us into the process. Um, <clears throat> I know I'm forgetting something. <laughs> but that's basically it. Um, you know, technology, technology, technology. Um, I'm starting to see that uh, some of the other county schools, um, my principal showed us how, you know, they're using the YouTube channels to get the information out. I mean, I think that we can do a much better job with what we already have. And, you know, we, it's just not getting done. I think that, you know, it needs to be done because, you know, I'm feeling left out the loop and I don't know, you know what I mean? I just, I just don't know and I, and I shouldn't feel like that as a parent, so. Thank you very much. Sheena Washington. Dr. Maxwell and Hi. members of the board, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, I'm a teacher at Oxon Hill High School. I'm a special educator. And so my questions tonight, I'm wondering if there are um, financial um, allocations to have another program next year that will provide alternative certification for special education teachers and also ESOL teachers. I know that last year there was a program where teachers could apply to get a master's degree and, and get alternative certification. And I know those are areas where there's a high need to recruit and retain teachers. So my question is, is that going to be included again this year in the budget? So, so we're not really doing questions tonight, but we're doing advocacy okay. for things in the budget. So okay. I'll, ac I'll accept that question as okay. a, that's what you'd like to see us include yes. in our budget. And, yes. and, uh, and we're, we're taking notes and, okay. and we'll certainly look into that. Okay, thank you. Um, I also wanted to talk about the PAR program. I'm really happy that that is a new initiative here in the county. And so I would advocate for more PAR special education teachers. Um, I am part of a collaborative group that looks at how we can retain special education teachers. 
And I think having a strong mentor for new teachers that we're recruiting is extremely important. Um, so I would ask that we increase the numbers of PAR mentors for special educators specifically. It's a unique job that we do. Um, and then my third area of advocacy would be um, providing funding for alternative career pathways for teachers that allow teachers to have hybrid roles where we remain connected to the classroom, we remain connected to our buildings, um, remain, we remain connected to our students and to our parents, but we are also collaborating with the board on issues that directly impact teachers and our students. So I would ask for more funding for alternative career pathways for teachers who do not want to become administrators but do want re leadership roles. Thank you. Thank you. So I have one more person, but I'm going to go back in case I, let me make sure I remember who I, who I uh, didn't have here before. What was that? Yes, yeah, Stacy Nellums. Nellums, did you come in? Yes, I Awesome. Did. You're up. Thank you very much. I got lost coming here. It's okay. I understand how that can happen. So I, I appreciate the opportunity um, to address the board uh, for advocacy. What I'd like to talk about is bullying. Um, it doesn't matter whether or not um, you have all of the, the things in place for a child to get a good education. If they're afraid, then um, they're not going to learn. And so I'm the parent of, I'm of two children, one in the TAG program with Glen Arden Woods and another uh, is a special education student. Um, this is our third year with PGCPS. Um, my son has been slapped, pushed, punched in the face, pants and underwear pulled while in the bathroom, threatened, teased, choked, set up and tackled. Um, this has happened in aftercare, this has happened while waiting in line for breakfast in school, and this has happened in school and while walking into school. Um, my son says that he's not safe and he doesn't want to go to school anymore. Um, that's a hard thing for a parent to hear, especially when you're trying to do your best for your child. He's asked me if he could bring a stick to school to protect himself. Um, we've told him no, and we've told him to use words, but it's very hard when he says, Mom, words aren't gonna work, you know, with some of these kids. So I think the root causes, because I'm not here to complain, I'm really here for advocacy. I think there's a culture of what kids are calling joning um, and intimidation to not be a snitch. When I was growing up, we called it playing the dozens, but it's really different now. Um, the things that kids say to each other are incredibly cruel, incredibly damaging. I think there's also a superficial bullying messaging that's going on in the schools. Saying it in assembly is not enough. You need to invest resources into actual programs. Um, I don't think there's enough training of teachers, aftercare, support staff, and children. So in terms of solutions, and I only have a few, so I hope I have enough time, please. So the first is assessment. If you wanted to assess to see exactly what is going on in school, perhaps set up a task force, or perhaps set up a group that could examine this. But also, there are formal evidence-based curriculum all in, already in place that are for elementary and middle school um, students. Um, these are evaluated programs that address bullying. And I, I ask that you all consider having resources towards those. I think you need to incorporate anti-bullying into the school culture, into lessons, into activities. Um, schools can, you know, an assignment in a reading class can be search the internet for bullying. An assignment in math class can be come up with a poster on bullying and then present to the class what you've done. Um, creative writing can be come up with a poem about bullying. Um, there can be peer group training where you do train the trainers. There could be safety patrol. You know, when I grew up, I was a safety patrol student. There could be a bully patrol. So I'm asking um, and advocating for resources to be put towards bullying so that children who are bright and who are in school and who want to learn can feel safe and able to do so. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm happy to help. <laughs> Thanks. We'll have somebody reach out to you as well to, to uh, talk with you about your own situation. Thanks. Let me see who else I missed. Josephine 
Ansa Brew. I think everybody else is here, right? Except for one that I didn't call yet. Lori Arguelles, it's great to see you. You too, Dr. Maxwell. You are Thanks. our last speaker. Well, our that's always a welcome place to be, isn't it? But I, well, <laughs> but I will also say to everyone on live streaming and those in the audience that didn't sign up in time to speak, you can also email uh, or send snail mail if you wish, but you can also email your comments uh, to us as well. Uh, my email account is ceo at pgcps.org. That's probably the easiest. Wonderful. Well, thank you. Um, it's wonderful to see you and Dr. Anderson and other members of the um, board. So thank you for the opportunity. My name is Lori Arguez, and I'm privileged to serve as the executive director of the Alice Ferguson Foundation. Our roots in Prince George's County run deep, and we have been an integral part of the county's environmental education effort for decades. During our now 60 years of operation, we have served more than 300,000 elementary school students at our Hard Bargain Farm Environmental Center and also uh, secondary students through our Bridging the Watershed STEM-focused field study experiences for middle and secondary school students. And for more than a decade, the foundation has offered Prince George's County teachers hands-on, classroom-ready professional development during our summer teacher institutes. And in the words of one of our recent graduates, the workshops at the Alice Ferguson Foundation were truly a life-changing event for me. For example, this last week, I went into school to plant native trees with our summer school students. We are working with a landscape architect, and many students mentioned that they would love such a career. Once again, thank you for the top quality workshops. So this year, the Foundation's Summer Science Institute was made possible in large part by support from the Prince George's County Public School System. And Dr. Anderson, we were delighted to have you there to welcome the teachers. We leveraged these funds with support from NOAA's BWET program to provide this extraordinary opportunity for teachers to enhance their knowledge base and infuse that into their students. Suffice to say that our investment in Prince George's County school students is significant, and we appreciate that, Dr. Maxwell, under your leadership, that this important investment in the arena of environmental education is robust and greater than any other time in recent history. We do work in close partnership with the Schmidt Center to provide these vital and life-changing opportunities for students and teachers, and respectfully request continued robust support for all of these endeavors. And I guess that's. Go ahead. What? Well, thank you. I'm, I'm pleased to be able to continue because you know that as we revitalize our campus, um, our educational campus, that we've invested in the world's most stringent set of energy efficient green building regimes, known as the Living Building Challenge, and the net zero energy and water and waste aspects of this project, as well as the non-toxic, non-polluting, and carbon neutral components make it truly aspirational and a prototype for the future. We recently hosted a team from the school systems planning department to learn how these principles can be applied within the county schools and at the Schmidt Center. These green buildings are important teaching tools and we strongly encourage the school system to be bold in thinking about the value of such investments and how they can translate into action in the classroom. And one last little story I'd love to share. At the groundbreaking of our new buildings about a year ago, we asked then 10-year-old Owen Ziegler, who was a student at Heather Hills Elementary School, to share his thoughts from a recent visit. He said, I couldn't wait until my overnight trip to Hard Bargain Farm. My first activity was a hike through the woods. We learned about pollution and how it harms living organisms. That one hike changed my whole point of view about the environment. In the future, I see myself stopping someone from littering to protect the animals and nature. The litter made me worry about the fish and animals that might die from choking or eating it. My visit to Hard Bargain Farm provided many hands-on learning experiences, like milking a cow. These are all things that I will never forget. Many of my friends have never had a chance to get out into the woods or see farm animals up close. We do not have very many opportunities to explore nature at school, so thank you for providing our school and other schools this learning opportunity. My younger sisters can't wait to visit Hard Bargain Farm. So uh, my final thought is you plan, finalize plans for the upcoming school year. Please know that the investments that you make in programs and infrastructure like these have lasting impact. And I thank you for your time and attention.
Thank you. I see a hand, although we're not calling on people, really. Well, yes, ma'am. Yes. What's your name? Helena Walker. I Max. Sure to so we don't have it on the list, but if you want to take two minutes, you're welcome to do that. I will. Thank you. So now this is the last speaker, everyone. Okay. Thank and you, you can much. email me at CEO <laughs> at PGCPS.org. I will. <laughs> uh, my name is Selenia Walker. My, ch I, my children go to Samuel Chase Elementary School. Um, I'm, I want to know what's going on with the school. The school was slated along with six other schools to be torn down and, re and rebuilt from ground up in 2008 and has been reintroduced every year to be rebuilt and as of last year they decided they're not, no longer going to do it because the numbers, um, the enrollment numbers are so low. There are lots of children in the neighborhood but a lot of the parents don't want them to go to Samutation because of the dilapidated conditions. So they drive their children outside of the neighborhood to other schools near their jobs or wherever. So the numbers are going to continue to go down because the school is going down. Um, I have some pictures of the, the playground. I've written letters to constituent board, to um, my, war, my district eight representative, which I never got a response from. And I've gotten emails and some things done. They finished some things, they painted. Um, but I mean, the basketball court, they, re they received $15,144 to go towards that. The basketball court is still broken up. It's got broken, I mean, I have the pictures. They have broken um, concrete. The courts are too high for, uh, for the children to play on. There's two swings for a whole entire elementary school. And I tried to get my children. I've been out, been there since March. I came from uh, Charles County Schools. I've asked to be, my children to be relocated. They said, well, no, you only can get one chance, and that school is full, so you're stuck there. And since I'm stuck there, I want to be able to help. Even period, even when I started. Even I've asked what's going on with PTA. They said, well, it's not functioning. I, so I feel like, you know, kind of left out. I don't know what else to do, but the school is dilapidated and it needs care, and I'm not getting a proper response. Thank you. And if you want to make sure you give your contact information to Mr. Pugh right there next to you, okay. we'll make sure that someone reaches out to you and we'll get you the responses that you need. I will just say for those listening and those here in the audience, you know, the physical conditions of our building, we understand there's a, a lot of demand, a lot of need there. We have over a $2 billion backlog in school construction and maintenance needs, and we don't print our own money or sell our own bonds. That all comes from the county and the state. And uh, the county executive and myself and our board representatives went down to the state house last year to lobby for a change in the funding formula by the state of Maryland and the county government offered to increase their contributions as well if the state would increase uh, their formula for uh, the largest counties in the state. There's a task force uh, at the state studying that right now and I would encourage everyone uh, to continue to advocate uh, not just at the board level because we again don't create our own funding but at the county council and at your uh, state uh, delegates and state senators' offices for additional funding for our public schools. Thank you all for coming here tonight and for voicing your advocacy. There will, of course, be uh, you know, a, a presentation of my budget to the board and then a series of public hearings, which we will announce. Uh, and they're probably, I think they're already on the, the website for our school system. And uh, you're welcome to come to the public hearings that the board then has, and then the board acts on my budget and makes it their budget, and the board's budget goes to the county council, county, oh, well, the county executive, and then the county executive presents to the county council, and there are opportunities all along the way for you to voice uh, your uh, support for your preferences and your support of our school system's budget. I thank you for your interest. I thank you for your advocacy. and. Uh, some of you I've seen repeatedly here in support of our school system. And for that, know from my heart, I am very, very thankful for that. Thank you.